Blessings Divine Reflection. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is I Dallas. I'm a healer and a psychic intuitive. And on this channel, I love to talk about deep esoterica, the healing journey, the spiritual journey. So definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell so you never miss a video. I'm coming to you every single week with some brand new knowledge. If you are interested in hearing more about Reiki healing and also self-help, definitely check out my blog, which is linked below. So yeah, those are all my announcements. Without further ado, I will see you in the video. <laughs> Welcome to the Types of Lunar Goddesses video. I felt very guided to share the messages of these goddesses with you. We're going to get into 10 different goddesses today across all different cultures, that being the Egyptian goddess Isis, the West African goddess Ngame, the Chinese goddess Chang'o, the Greek goddesses Diana, Artemis, they're the same goddess, Diana and Artemis, Selene and Hecate. We're also going to get into the Mayan goddess Ixchel, the Siberian goddess Kaltes, and the Celtic goddesses Arianhad and Seridwen. I'll leave timestamps for all of the different goddesses is down below but I'm going to give you a very brief mythology of all of them and also their influences in case you want to connect with these goddesses surrounding the moon right typically we associate the moon and you know the full moon the new moon with like manifestation and things of that sort and releasing and letting go but connecting to the archetype of the moon is also to connect to divine feminine energy it's also to connect to the divine feminine within you. And also, I think this video is really helpful for those who are looking for just kind of universal ideologies of what femininity is, right? It's so broad. The divine feminine is a creator. She's a huntress. She's a prophet. She's a magical being. She's mystery. She's terror sometimes. But she's also a mother and a nurturer and... Um, all of these archetypes can be found within these goddesses and without further ado, let's just get into it who they are what they represent and how you can connect to them. Okay, first up we have the goddess Isis. Isis is an Egyptian lunar deity who is the queen of the goddesses and one of the oldest of You know the goddesses that I'm about to mention. Isis embodies total femininity. She is a creator, she is a mother, she is a sustainer of life. Isis also rules over the occult, magic, intuition, dreams, as well as medicine and agriculture. She's death-defying and a healer as well. Um, in one famous myth, she revives her counterpart Osiris after he was murdered by his brother Set. Both Isis and Osiris also um, give birth to the god of the sky, Horus. Horus has, is born with both the aspects of the moon and the sun in his eyes, <laughs> which is really interesting that the god and goddess of the underworld created the sky. It's kind of beautiful, poetic. Some symbols to connect to Isis are the Ankh, of course, um, as well as the throne, which sits upon her head. Also her image, right? It's regal. Um, there are statues you can find of her almost everywhere. Next up, we have the West African lunar deity Ngame, who appeared to me as I was writing this video. She came to me. She wanted to be a part of it. She's getting her representation. She's getting her moment to shine. Speaking of shining, Ngame literally translates to the shining one. It is said that Ngame created all of the heavenly bodies and that with her bow and arrow, which she is usually depicted with, she shot life into all living beings and creatures on planet earth. So yeah, definitely not only a lunar goddess, but a creatress. It is also said that Ngame gives birth 
to the sun every single morning. Ngame is the triple moon goddess of West Africa. The triple moon is one of her symbols, as well as the bow and arrow, of course, and she's also connected to menstruation. Her colors include white and silver, and some offerings to Ngame include yams, eggs, and dried okra. So lovely. So yes, she is a triple moon deity of West Africa. What I really liked about this video as well is, is the kind of link between all like different types of cultures all around the world. And as we continue on, you'll see that really all of these goddesses do have a through line. They all are linked um, in some way. And it's so interesting how people from all over the globe have connected to these archetypes in the same ways. It's almost unbelievable. Okay, next up we have the Chinese goddess Chang O. She is the lunar deity of China as well as Vietnam and a lot of other Asian countries. So in this mythology, Chang O's husband is actually the archer and his name is Hu Yi. The legend goes that one day nine extra suns rose and began to scorch earth. That's when Hu Yi, the archer, shoots down nine of the sun, nine sons, right? And as reward by the gods, he is given the elixir of life, eternal life. It's said that this elixir was crafted by a white hare, a white rabbit, also known as the jade rabbit. But Hu Yi was in love with his wife and didn't, didn't want to just drink it alone, right? He wanted to have eternal life with his partner. And one night when Hu Yi was out hunting, there's two different variations of the story. One night when Hu Yi is out hunting, a jealous neighbor or, you know, a jealous fellow archer tries to steal the elixir and then his wife, Cheng O, ends up drinking it to stop the thief. But in another version of the story, his wife drinks it out of spite for her husband and flees to the moon where she lives eternally with her white rabbit. In her honor, people make moon cakes on the eighth lunar month and it all happens during this mid-autumn festival. In China and other Asian countries, some of her symbols include the white rabbit, white jade, white silk. Chang O also represents yin energy in general, um, as well as snow and ice. Okay, next up we have the Celtic goddesses Arianhod and Seridwen. Arianhod is a Celtic moon goddess that represents the maiden slash mother archetype, right? Within the triple moon structure, there's the maiden, the mother, and the crone, which are the three phases of femininity. Arianhod actually translates to high fruitful mother who turns the wheel of the heavens. <laughs> Another variation of her name is Silver Wheel. Arian Had has love for all beings that are on planet Earth and is also the keeper of the cycles of time and the change of the seasons. In Celtic mythology, Arian Had actually presides in the Corona Borealis, which is a constellation that is deemed her castle, her throne in which she presides over the souls in purgatory, so those awaiting, you know, rebirth. And Arian Hod is also a guide to help us through our dark night of the soul. So that's Arian Hod. And then the dark mother crone archetype is Celtic lunar deity Seridwen. Now I wanted to talk about Seridwen because I don't think there are a lot of archetypes of like crone energy. The older female energy I feel has been kind of lost or made less than unappealing but it's it's a deep and powerful energy that deserves recognition and deserves like full embrace okay so seridwen um in celtic mythology was a powerful witch who had the ability to foretell prophecies seridwen rules over the underworld death fertility, transformation, as well as magic, enchantment, witchcraft, 
and the cauldron um, is one of her symbols. Seridwen is the example that something must die in order to be reborn, embodies the duality of light and dark, and it is famed that she was also a shapeshifter. And she very famously would shapeshift into a white sow or a white pig. <laughs> um, is also one of her symbols, along with the cauldron, and represents the new moon, whereas Arianhad would be more of like the full moon. Okay, and now let's get into the Greek goddesses, Diana slash Artemis, Selene, and Hecate. So Diana is actually the Roman version of Artemis, who is Greek, but also dates back to as far as Paleolithic times. So the archetype of Diana and Artemis is the maiden energy. The reason why they have been molded together is because they embody similar traits. Diana or Artemis is the huntress. She's the lady of beasts and um, rules over wild animals and also the archetype of the wild woman who is untamed. Diana or Artemis is also famed for being fiercely independent, right, and isn't tied down by any masculine figure, she's not tied to any ma male deity, right, and lives life kind of on her own terms. The maiden is actually also very connected to her primitive and instinctual nature. When we typically think of the maiden or the virgin archetype, we think of like someone who is soft and maybe weak and vulnerable but the maiden is someone who is actually deep in their power here and that's something that's been forgotten. There's all this trend about the dark feminine and embrace of the dark feminine, but the feminine in truth and in history has always been, has always embodied a kind of darkness, you know, and a light. It's, it's, it's both, it's duality. Well, I feel like this is very controversial, but Diana was actually a huge part of the feminist movement of the in the US and kind of rebirthed return of witchcraft and wicca within the culture scape and in the collective mind. Dianic witchcraft, Dianic um, wicca was kind of like the first of its kind and Diana was worshipped as women began to return to their you know independence and return to their true nature, which is also very interesting. Diana is also a protector of childbirth and also, you know, a protector of women in general through all of her phases of life, from menstruation to menopause to nursing um, and even death. So if Diana was the embodiment of the waxing moon and the crescent, Selene is the embodiment of the full moon. Selene in Greek translates to bright or shining. She would be the mother archetype here. She is the queen of the starlit heavens and carries the moon on a chariot that is driven by pegasuses or oxen. So Selene is also the sister to Helios. In a famous Greek myth, she falls in love with a mortal, with a mortal, who is then granted immortality but falls into a deep sleep. Um, and it is said that Selene visits him every night, which is just so interesting because Selene also, you know, rules over dreams and intuition and also our emotions. And then lastly, we have Hecate, who is the embodiment of the dark moon, the new moon, and also the crone archetype. She's also a Greek lunar deity. Artemis, Selene, and Hecate all create the triple moon. So Hecate is actually the guardian of the crossroads, right? The, the realms between the living and the dead. She also rules over ghosts and necromancy and is often depicted with two torch lights. In a famous Greek myth, Hecate also helps to lead Persephone out of the underworld, out of Hades' lair. She is also a protector of athletes, warriors, shepherds, and horsemen and she is also a deity of childbirth. She is also oftentimes depicted with dogs, right? Dogs howl at the moon. Dogs also would frequently um, eat dead bodies that weren't buried properly. So those are a couple of reasons why dogs were probably associated with this deity. Hecate as well is capable of 
both good and evil. She is also kind of that duality. <sighs> that was a lot. Okay, and now we have the Mayan goddess Ixchel. Ixchel is revered throughout the Yucatan Peninsula of southern Mexico. Ixchel is married to the sun but is also fiercely independent. She is also a goddess of fertility as well as a patron of childbirth. She also rules over healing and medicine, textile arts, and weaving. She also is connected to creativity and is also depicted with a white rabbit which is just also again very interesting and then lastly we have Caltes, which is a siberian goddess who also embodies similar archetypes to the aforementioned goddesses so yeah Caltes is a siberian goddess of the ugric peoples Caltes as well was a shapeshifter and would oftentimes appear as a white rabbit. Crazy. Caltes rules over fertility, fecundity, she rules over the fates, you know, just fate in general, and also rejuvenation. Caltes acts as a messenger between worlds and is known for her gentle wisdom. So that's all of the 10 goddesses laid out for you. Um, it was such an honor to connect to these goddesses and it was so interesting also to learn about their interconnection and um, how all of these cultures throughout history have connected to the archetype of the moon and femininity in such similar ways. I love being a bridge between cultures and I think it's the most fascinating thing ever. If you are going to work with a specific deity that I mentioned, definitely link it down below. Let me know which goddess you feel most connected to. That's all from me on my end. I hope that you can empower your moon rituals in the future with this information. I have different ideas for like types of goddesses and deities. Let me know. Let me know below if you enjoyed this kind of content as well and i'll see you next week for a brand new video bye